take. Uh, we are known for trying new things, even though we have a tough schedule. Uh, we did an airplane that we that the customer wanted it uh, flying within uh, I think it was eight and a half months, uh, and we elected on our own to try a totally new manufacturing method uh, for the wings and tail surfaces and control surfaces, something that hadn't been done before, something that may not work, something that was really exciting and interesting, and if it did work, it, it's breakthrough stuff. And we. Goals. Our first astronaut, Alan Shepard, who flew a suborbital flight, followed Gagarin by only three weeks. After Shepard's flight, it took only seven and a half years for us to launch Apollo 8 to go out and orbit the moon. Um, they went to the moon on the very first manned flight of the big Saturn V. Now, can you imagine today? NASA developing a, a brand new, huge, big advance rocket. And the first time people fly on it, they go to the moon or they go somewhere we've never been before. That puts in perspective the kind of risks that we, that we were taking. And those who put themselves in a position to take enormous risks are those that have breakthroughs and those that, that, that have research results. Okay, how? I believe that confidence in nonsense is a major factor, and the reason is, think of the most important breakthrough that you can think of. Go back before it was recognized as a breakthrough, and the populace normally would consider, well, that's nonsense. That's nonsensical. And all of a sudden, when it really is recognized as a true breakthrough, then of course, oh, yeah, that's really cool. But what people forget is it's nonsense before. Well, what that means, that's why the weird folk have the breakthroughs, because they have confidence in nonsense. If it's nonsensical and you say, well, I'm not going to try to do that, it didn't make sense, you're not going to have a breakthrough. The guy who is silly enough to think that, hey, I'll try that even though it's nonsense, he's the guy that's going to have the breakthrough. So uh, try things that you don't think will work. If you think they'll work, you're not doing research anyway. The reason we survived. And uh, I feel very strongly that it's not good enough for us to have generations of kids that think that it's okay to look forward to a better version of a cell phone with a video in it. They need to look forward to exploration. They need to look forward to colonization. They need to look forward to breakthroughs. They need to, uh, uh, we need to inspire them because they need to lead us and help us survive in the future. If something's complicated. But what I try to encourage people to do is to have a breakthrough by finding a way to do it more simply. Uh, and even if the real simple one has a chance of, of uh, not working, because it's too simple, well, try it anyway. Because in trying it, sometimes you'll stumble onto a solution on why it wouldn't work. And now you've really had a big gain. Now you have a simple thing that does work. And that's, that's the, real, the real challenge now. You can always make something work by adding complexity, but you can never make something affordable by adding complexity.